How the heck are you everybody? I am Fastidious. Welcome to my channel and a big welcome to Zucania, who is joining me all the way from Germany and all the way from Twitch to break down stage normal campaign 917. Great to have you here. How you doing, buddy? Hello. Guys, thanks for having me. I'm Zucania. I stream on Twitch every day and yeah, that's that I would say. Yeah, he is one of the best streamers we have on Twitch right now, doing free takeovers like every day, right? Yes, five to seven hours every day. Amazing. From Monday yeah. to Saturday. Sunday, I always uh, take a day off. The Lord's Day. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's the German rule. <laughs> the German rule. <laughs> I know it well. Okay, so yeah. we're here uh, in 917. The reason our, our heads are so high is because we don't want to be in the way of any of the action. We actually just wrapped up on Twitch where we were demoing this strategy, and we've actually worked pretty hard to strip back all the gear and make this as free-to-play a comp as possible. So I'm really hoping it helps a lot of people. So maybe let's just go down the list and show off hero by hero, and then we get right into it. What do you say? Yeah, let's do that. Fastidious. Fastidious. We start with ref and we mm -hmm. go from left to right, I would say, yeah. Totally. Ref is this. Attack. Let me actually we unload you over here. Yeah, perfect. We show this. Yes. 12k attack. Uh, 18k attack, sorry. 32k HP. Yes. Nice, atta nice attack interval. 1.7. 1.7 attack interval as well. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And this yeah. artifact is this one. Well, skull. Skull. Actually, That's Wrath fine. is the only hero we have that is in any premium gear. So maybe should we take that piece off of him? What do you say? That that uh the, the artifact? That amulet? No, the amulet. The amulet is a uh, infernal roar. Every other build that you guys are gonna see. So maybe we can take that off. Let's let's see if we can find we something can else. Take it off. Yeah, we tried to we really scale this sure. back as much as possible. So we we'll go attack bonus and yeah, create attack speed. Probably can we buy can something take nice. Any piece. This one is nice. <laughs> yeah, so that looks good. Wait, look yeah, this. we really uh, went out of our way to like, you know, all gear you can farm from stage 18 or lower in the gear raids. And, you know, we're bringing Salazar. Yeah. He's a good hero, but we tried not to, you know, bring Silas and tried to limit the OPness of what we're doing here. Uh, so, yeah, pretty good one. Shall we go to the next? Yeah. Yeah, let's go to the next one. Speaking, speaking of the devil. <laughs> he has full storyline yeah. on the right side. Awesome. Also the crit rate on the first. Straight up starter and, set. Yeah. Basically, storyline. Yes, 21k attack because his base attack is very high too. Mm -hmm. And his attack interval is already pretty good. It's 1.15. Yeah. yeah, so we built him a 267 additional. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's nice attack speed, but it's not crazy, you know? Yeah. And Standard. he has Calatan plus one. Yeah, awesome. On to Volka. Volka, we made full tank. Yeah, so for Volka, we did a build I like to do a lot. Uh, if you're not going to use it for DPS, which is basically you never will, just do really tanky with a lot of attack speed, and you're kind of good to go. Uh, so we have that attack exactly. speed amulet, and yeah, perfect. And we Lunacy take this for more sustain. Yeah. One more block and more healing. You look sure. And here we have full base chest set. Mm -hmm. It's good attack, good HP, good crit rate. But damage is not on the good side, but that's fine. He has 17k attack, he has 1.5 seconds in attack interval, and yeah. Half a percentage left, left uh, less than crit cap though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has plus 2 IR sin, and yeah, that's our combination. He's also very key monster to block the uh, boss, right? Totally, yeah. Yeah, he that's has like a really, sound. really hybrid purpose for Abomination. He's like a tank, but also some solid, quick DPS. Yeah. And that's probably our best gear units, I would say. Yeah, I think so. In yeah. Actually, that's while we a... show off the great gear on Kineza, you know, again, it's just a curse set. You can farm it from 218 or whatever you want to do. Big shout out to Jermaine, a friend of yours, right, who lent us the account. Um, yeah, really nice, thank really you, nice gear. We had lent us account, I know, for a long time. And yeah, and I think the world is 1.4. Yeah. And Attack five points. Almost five points less than eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> you can say eighteen. I we guess. can say it. we can round up. <laughs> yeah, and flux pendant or yeah. how you call this one. Yeah, from flux pendant, and, and it's also you get this from the storyline too, right? So this is like from chapter seventeen. So another storyline piece. 
Yeah, the, the, you mean the artifact quest? Yeah, the flux pendant. You can buy more copies oh. from the guild shop, but the first copy you get for free. So like another very free to play thing. Yeah. That's our hollow. She has got the up in one. Great artifact for her. Yeah, it's a pack which makes her more healing and rage region is always nice on hollow as well. Absolutely. That's our Vortex. Yes, 41k HP. And 1.5 seconds attack interval. Really good attack speed, nice attack interval. Yeah. And artifact we used. Yeah. Next speech one. So you guys can see all the artifacts we chose to use are like pretty low promotions. Like even when we get to uh, Amani, you'll see like he has, uh, Jermaine has a promotion four tier Twilight. We went for the zero tier Twilight, you know? Yeah, we can show that this way. That's our Oleg. 85 HP. Attack interval, I don't think it matters on him. No, <laughs> he's just a thick boy. And yeah, 7 page <laughs> in defense as well. And we use... So that's we as many promos them. you'll see. I think this one's promo 3, and the Flawless yeah, Blade just... is promo 3. Or the Frigid Flame, they changed the name. The Frigid Flame on Valkyra, who's coming up yeah. now. That's our Valkyra. Also nothing special, I would say. Attack is 17k. Attack interval is 1.5. So, yeah. So all this gear is kind of accessible from stage 18. It's not kind of, totally. it's accessible. It is, yeah, from yeah, it is. And there's that and frigid, frigid flame. Level actually, two. only promo 2. Yeah. Yeah. Last but not least, my main girl, the first 60 on my account, Amani. The first 60 on your account? I didn't know. First 60, that. yeah. That's crazy. But and not even, yeah. not even crit catch because from her passive, because we're going to deploy her and then pick her up, she's going to get 25% uh, crit naturally. So you only we actually yeah. are 15% over, 15.5% over. This one. Yeah. It holds for 25 seconds. So if you're not planning to use it the whole fight, it's, you don't need the crit rate. Pretty awesome. You want to, yeah. And actually, yeah, for we want white tower trinket. We have this, but we don't use it just to show that it's not needed. Totally. And do you actually want to show her Awaken 3, just to explain that? Because we were admiring that during our runs. Uh, this reduces her revival time to 35 seconds, which that if you bring Volka, exactly. is like not even 27 seconds. It's so good. <laughs> it's so fun. Exactly. That's yeah. crazy. With Volka together, she's amazing. You can drop her in and out and in and out. Yeah, cycle, cycle. And that was the heroes. Excellent. That was the gear. And let's hop into the run, I would say. All right. I think we're ready. Should we head into battle, Zucania? Yeah, let's go. Perfect. Also, wanna, what, what I want to talk about is what the boss does. Mm -hmm. which we will explain in the run as well, is Energy Barrage. It launches three magic energy, energy bursts towards the last deployed hero within three tiles. So it only attacks the people what is in three tiles. If he's mm -hmm. from the boss more than three tiles away, he doesn't do it. But that's important to know for us to make our Imani survive later. Absolutely. And I'll explain one more thing here. So you're going to see, we're obviously building up costs right now, but the units are starting to come out. We are starting to have enough costs to deploy people. But actually, for anyone who's totally new to this battle, you might not know this. The boss is going to come up, and periodically he does these big AoEs that hit the whole map. So originally, we don't need any units down right now, so there's no reason to start placing people when we know he's about to AoE right now. So you're going to see he's going to summon this crystal. So better yet, let him get that first AoE out of his system, then we can start placing units, right? Just sets us... That sets us sets us up for success in a much better way. Yeah. And after that one, what Fastidious just explained, we place our first two units, Ref and Oleg. Mm -hmm. Perfect. On this positioning. And then we wait till we make the second AOE, what Fastidious just said as well. Exactly. So the reason the reason why we have Ref here, because this mage gonna make hard life for our damage leaders to survive. Mm -hmm. And he will go through the portal too fast for us because we don't have so much damage to kill the boss fast enough. And yeah, we just put Ref there to kill this mage. Easy. <laughs> and he, he makes it look easy. Yeah. And then we get Ref out. And now we wait till the boss makes this AoE again. Now we put Vortex down. Now it's that's why we st at the start we showed you guys the energy barrage. Mm -hmm. Now it's important to do this. So I put Vortex down first. Then he will make the burst on Vortex. Then we can place her and our Yeah. So it's really has attack interval for the barrage thing. 
Yeah, perfect. And it's really important to understand that interval that you're describing because even though like we place Vortex then Amani, because you fit the window nicely, he like already put his attention to Vortex and was already starting the attack. So even though Amani was like last placed at that time, he already was like on his attack to Vortex, right? So then by doing Amani immediately into Abomination, Amani's in the clear because she's just going to get one shot if he if he tries to go for her. <laughs> yeah. If you put the money first, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> you have to restart. <laughs> you did. Then we pop Imani. Yeah, Imani's, and... Imani's so good for this fight. She's just going to make our life way easier. Yes. Then we put Zaza down just to burst the boss. Now we want to burst the boss as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So we put Zalaza here down. And after that, we put Kinesa down to just get more damage, right? Imani dies here. From the AV, that's normal. But no she killed this uh, golem, which was the important part. So Oleg is still fine. Yeah, yeah she just made Olog's, Olog's life much easier. Any damage she put on the boss was just like bonus. Exactly. Now we didn't use Zalaza, we hold on to him till Vortex has ultimate up to make everyone survive because she makes this AV. This one is random Yeah. on who it comes. Yeah. If you're lucky, which we are right now, it goes on Alec and then everyone is safe regardless. But if you have Vortex Ultimate, you can survive it with Vortex Ultimate as well. And just to explain it really and quickly, then... that bar that says 21 and now 42, that fills up whenever we do an ultimate. So you, even though Salazar was ready, you were waiting for Vortex, right? Because you need to do Vortex before Salazar because Salazar needs to be shielded when that AOE comes. Exactly. Otherwise, you are, if it comes on your damage shield, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why Vortex is so good in this one. And now we can put down Valkyra just to make more damage, to make it faster. It doesn't matter if you put that down at this moment or not, but it makes it faster. Totally. And it's really important here, guys, and I'll let you explain this when it's because we're about to burst down the boss. Don't start picking up your units. Don't retreat any units. Leave them all out, even though the, the, the phase is about to end. Yes, we can explain it also before the boss dies. So now people, I saw some people in YouTube and stuff, start to unsummoning them when the boss is almost dead and they leave one DPS to finish mm -hmm. them off. If you do that, your DPS people have 60 seconds. I mean, whoever was on the field and you unsummon them right before the boss dies, it still have the whole cooldown, the 60 seconds. If you just leave them on the field, you will see now they they just come back in five or like 10 seconds, I'm not sure. Yeah, the game, you see it does this animation, seconds. it like returns our heroes to us and it's on like a super short cooldown. They're basically gonna be ready to, by the time this boss is ready, they'll be ready, essentially. Yeah, and it also gives us cost back. Yeah. So we have now 81 costs, right? Yeah, I'll just say one thing really quickly. Uh, so that's, that's phase one. So for anyone that's like brand new to this fight, there's two phases. There's like the white version of the boss and then the purple and black version of the boss. So there you go, like pat yourself on the back. Amazing job, phase one is done. Now phase two, a little bit more straightforward, uh, but a little bit more, you know, it can be precarious. So I'll let you take it from here on how to really nail these first deployments and make sure you're ready. But yeah, you can look, we have 3.5 seconds on everybody. We're basically ready to go. So let's yeah. do it. So we wait a little bit, even when we have them up. What I do is, because the boss gonna make a X on the units, which is last placed, which you will see now when I put Vortex down. Now I put Vortex down as soon as I see this red line coming from the top left. And then I put Breath up here. Then I put Oleg here. And Abomination after, as last one. And now we wait a little bit the boss arrives to our mm -hmm. mission. And also Ref is important to have him here. You you see, he almost make it. Yeah. You will see our gear and then you can check out what you need for Ref to make this happen on the top left for the first wave. Yeah, you can use the way we geared Wrath kind of as like a baseline because you can see he's like getting close to death, but then as soon as he gets his ult up, he starts to self uh, restore his health and he's good to go. So as long as it's at least yeah. a strong gear, you're fine. Yeah, and now we place, you see now the boss making this X mm -hmm. and now we can place hollow because then he has attack interval and we put Zadaza after. Perfect.
And now it makes the X on the laser and our hollow is yeah. surviving. It's actually a very similar strategy, or at least the, the thinking behind it, to what we did in the first phase at the beginning, drawing the triple hits from the energy barrage. Once you see the X, then he's given his aggro, he's given his attention to Wrath, or I guess there was Abomination. That's now you have a window to quickly get Hollow down, who would die, and then get Salazar down, who can take it. Exactly. Kineza died, but we're fine. <laughs> yeah, Kineza always dies. She has no healing there. But yeah. she dips some damage in, which is nice to have. It helps us. Yeah. So now we put Volka down here. Wrath dies there usually always. That's a normal part. Although not always dies, but it, it's not crucial to have her alive. She made one hold ultimate, which gives Salazar a lot of ultimate charge. Yeah. And now we place Valkyrie here. In case some damage dealer dies, we have backup reviving. And also just the damage is nice as well. Here's the burst. Let's see if we make it. So important to say here to the viewers, uh, if you are able to kill the boss here, um, you're good to go and the fight will end. But as you can see, we're probably going to be just short, even though we're getting really, really, really close. Uh, so when he starts doing his next big move, yeah, we're at 2.7. Mm -hmm. oh, we almost got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if we had so gone it, you, you want to explain? Yeah, I can explain this. So you see, the boss has 2.7% left, right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't kill him fast enough in time. If the boss would have 0% left, you still come to this last phase. But if you kill him after that, in the last phase, his shield cooldown. Now you place as fast as possible units down that deal damage, right? Mm -hmm. And try to kill them as fast as possible on his shield. You yeah. get a little shield and you kill that. However, if he is on 0% and you kill this shield after that, GG. the fight is over. Yeah. But since we don't have to damage and uh, we have to play the whole fight through. Yeah. But yeah. So basically, if you people are lazy or they just don't want to deal with this and actually playing to finish the fight, if you are able to burst it and do that extra 2.7%, then the fight would be over right now. But unfortunately, we were just short, so we'll play out the rest and just show everybody how to do that. Yeah. And basically, now is the easiest part. The hard yeah. part is finish. The bosses are dead. So it's basically dealing with it like the way you would any normal stage. I'd say maybe if you want to explain, the only kind of pesky thing is this mage over here. He can be kind of annoying. Yeah, this mage is annoying. He's annoying. That's also, that's why we had Ref all the time. Mm -hmm. But Ref doesn't survive it on this stage. But it still be fine if you have two healers. The healers are safe because you don't have this X from the boss anymore. Mm -hmm. So your healers are completely fine. You can put Abomination and just kill him slowly. Yeah. The damage yes. healers dies here and there, but it's fine. You can just... Yeah. You will have them up in time for the next waves. Exactly. Basically, and, yeah. what, where we're at in the fight now is you just grind it out. We were using... Olog obviously is a tank and then effectively Volka as a tank. We've got our two good healers and we're just going to cycle units in and out to chip away and kill all the mobs and that's it. GG. Yeah, that's it. Their Wrath just now, gets his ult Wrath up is again. Always, always nice to have. <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> if, if he's awake in 5 of course, if he's yeah, not yeah, awake in 5, you cannot use him like this. Yeah. Yeah, for and anyone that's great as well. Yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, Wrath at Awaken Five gets these this big self restoration whenever he's ulting, and it just helps so much. Yeah. And I also say another cool awakening that we have. This Amani's Awaken Four, but if your Amani's Awaken Three or higher, uh, her deployment cost goes all the way down to thirty five. It's reduced by twenty five seconds her redeployment cost. So then when you bring Volca, she's like dirt cheap. It's like twenty six and a half. Uh, seconds, yeah. I think, is her cooldown. <laughs> and what we talked about the passive before as well, we can just unsummon her. She there has it is, only yeah. 25 seconds. Yeah. It's actually faster to unsummon her and summon her back in. Than to wait for the ult. Because she start, yeah, then yeah. to wait for the ult. <laughs> That's you so get true. The ult, ultimate faster up if you unsummon her. And yeah. then the passive will reactivate as well all the time, so you don't need to crit, crit rate. Yeah, like Fasi just explained before. It's really, that's the way to use Imani is like this kind of like tactical timed out weapon, you know, and just cycle her. Because she does have like a quote unquote expensive ult. It's like 1100 cost, but her initial cost is 1000. So it's like, like you said, it's just way more clever and way more quicker even uh, to just yes. pick her up, do the quick redeploy and rinse and repeat. Yes. And you see, I just placed her and she has ultimate up yeah. almost instantly. Like baby, and then you can just do the same thing. 
I didn't need to do this. I just wanted to show you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's not also <laughs> effective. It's for the boss. It's good though. For the yeah, boss, yeah. we need it a lot. Yeah. But for this stage, what we what you do here and last part is nothing with us anymore. No. You just hold up the the monsters basically. No. There's no strategy to the last fight. No, yeah. Have enough to make. Yeah. So yeah, if you <laughs> don't burst down the boss, basically, as long as you see, we have this nice little kind of diamond shape or plus sign between our two healers and our two tanks. You know, Volca, Olag, yeah. Hollow, and Vortex. As long as they're built decent, this part is just yeah, surviving, and then you got it. Yeah, exactly. It's just a time time contest, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Imani, as I said, instantly has almost all things. She's just fucking good. And she's yeah. dealing a lot of damage as well. I'll say one more thing that might help people. Because sometimes when I release guides, people, that not everyone gets it. Like, when we do this with using, like, a bunch of epics and not using any, like, premium gear and scaling it all back, no, you guys do not have to do that. You can bring your Silas, you can bring your Infernal Roar set or Soulbound Arcana or Invigoration, whatever great gear you want to use. All Ancients, right? Uh, this is just showing the, the 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 model of like a basic strategy. You can always level it up and do better and better with your amazing stuff. Uh, this is just trying to show closer to a minimum to get through it, right? Yes. And GG. We, yeah, that's basically the stage. But yeah, you don't need too much gear like people recommend. You you can just do it with this. Yeah. We all use stage eighteen gear. Nothing else. Yeah, exactly. And the gear is not so great rolled as well. Yeah. I'll say one more thing. So. People might say, well, we used a couple ancient pieces. Not not that many, but we did. Like, Kineza certainly had really good gear. Yeah. You can Kineza. get ancient pieces from stage 18. So yes. people seem yes. to act like you can't. You absolutely can. Yes, <laughs> you can. Yeah. And there it is. We already yeah. beat it, so the rewards aren't that special. However, when you beat it the first time, you get a legendary summoning crystal. So, pretty fun. Yes. I can show that as well. It's no. I we already we already anymore. claimed it. it. We've been beating us some new rewards. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, Zikani. This is this is really fun. Uh, I'll just plug you one more time. So right before this, we've been filming for like half an hour now. But right before this, we streamed this for like half an hour just to work out all our strategies and do our re-gearing. And you stream like literally like every day on Twitch, and it's really really good. So I, I couldn't recommend your your Twitch enough. I think Twitch needs more Watcher of Realms eyeballs. So. Thank you for what you're doing. It's great to have you in the game, and it's really lovely to have you on the channel. Thank you. Thank you for having me as well. And yeah, I stream on Twitch every day almost. Saturday, yeah. Sunday, I take day off because <laughs> a German rule. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I will have your... Oh, thank, thank you for coming. To stream this. Yeah. And I will say uh, I will have your link, obviously, in the description and the top and comment and on the screen right now. Uh, thank you so much, buddy. Guys, if you like it, like it. Go check out Zucania. Get in the comments if you have any questions. Subscribe. Share it with your mother. We'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.